What's going on guys, this is Wyatt Murray Outdoors and I've got a little update video for you. We've got some big news um, going on. And if you guys haven't noticed, we've uh, been putting a lot of emphasis into the youth, youth program now. Um, I started this out a while ago during duck season, uh, but we've had a lot more companies come on board and offer their support. And so that is now expanding to not just hunting, but also the fishing. And with that being said, I recently came uh, into possession of a Skipjack 20, 1972. My uncle uh, handed it down to me. It needs a little bit of work. Um, we're working on it, uh, a few pieces now, you know, water pumps, stuff like that, new seals and everything. I'm rebuilding the uh, outboard, make sure everything is uh, in good condition and then we're gonna do some other engine work. And then most of it after that is just cosmetic. Bottom paint is coming to the end of its life, so we'll have to do some bottom paint on it. We need some new seats, we need some gel coat, um, restoration, stuff like that. Some of the teak wood on it's been pretty, it's pretty old, hasn't been oiled for a while, so maybe some replacements or just re-oiling of that. I'd like to throw in some new electronics. Luckily, we've had Standard Horizon, the company Standard Horizon, chip in uh, a VHF at a really big discounted price so we can get a really nice high quality unit um, at a good price and so that's a shout out to them for helping us out um, with this project. They are the first company to really step on board and so really happy with that. Now with the Skipjack 20 uh, rebuild and stuff there will obviously be a lot more videos coming out in the future. This is going to be a new video series of us uh, restoring the boat and getting it all ready and um, I think it will be really fun but I want to give uh, companies and individuals opportunities to uh, support this program and support this uh, boat rebuild if they would like. Um, the biggest thing with companies is selling decal space. If you got a company and you want to uh, buy up some decal space on this boat, let's talk, let's see what we can do and um, you know get moving. Also if you know if you're thinking that way your company you really want to take um, you know not have any other decals on the boat and stuff, my biggest thing is that we're going to need a new bottom paint job and stuff. So if you're willing to chip in on that, um, getting that bottom paint and everything, I think we can get uh, work something out with decal uh, space and all that. Now for individuals, you know, I, I'm not really the type of person to really ask for donations and stuff. I'm just a hardworking guy. I believe if you want it, you can go out and get it. But the thing is, is the financial burn of the youth group and the skipjack rebuild um, it's kind of tough, so it slows down our progress um, on the rebuild. You know, I still got bills to pay. Live in the Bay Area, it ain't easy. So, with that being said, this is just to pretty much kickstart this uh, project and get it going faster. And that you know, with, once we get this boat, we can grow the youth group even more. We're pretty small right now because we don't really have any big enough watercraft. And so, with that being said, this group gets a lot bigger, and we're spreading the word of uh, fishing and hunting and stuff a lot more. With individuals. What I'm going to do, minimum donation has to be $20 just because um, what we're going to do is brass plaques. I would um, love to really shout everyone out on the boat who's donated to this project. And my, my plan is to take those brass plaques and line them up the uh, engine cover where everybody can see stuff like that. I'll be showing in videos a lot, etc. It'll just be your name, maybe an Instagram handle or a quote or something like that. Um, we got three lines of text to work with, so we got some uh, some room to work with. Get you guys what you want on there. But like I said, minimum donation twenty dollars. We'll do that through PayPal and Venmo. I'll put all that information down in the link below. Um, you know, and pretty much when you if you guys go ahead and donate, just donate. When you donate, put uh, on what you want on the plaque, etc. And then also an email or Instagram handle or something that I can contact you with. So that you guys kind of have a record, and I have a record also of messages that you guys have purchased a plaque and um, and have donated, so that you guys get the proper shout out. Um, that's really what I can do. The other thing we can do, depending if you guys are looking to put in a little bit more money into this Skipjack 20, into this, um, in, into donating, then maybe we can talk about getting you on the boat, getting you on some trips once the boat is done. Uh, but that's kind of a uh, vague thing out there, you know. So. If you guys are interested in that, hit me up. We'll see what we can do. But that is the update. This is what's going to be happening from now on is um, a lot of work on this boat and a lot of emphasis in the youth group. This is really why I started the YouTube channel um, in the first place was to spread the word of hunting and fishing and keep it keep our hunting and fishing access open in the Bay Area, if not expand it more. Um, and for me, 
what I've seen from the past and, and other organizations have done. I mean, the way to do that is is to teach the kids. You know, uh, they're the next generation coming up. They're the next lawmakers. Um, they're the next senators. They're the next presidents. They're the next lawyers. All that stuff. Um, you know, I'm seeing it now. I am super young and. The small amount of organizations that I am a part of, you know, I'm kind of limited on uh, what I can do. I only got so much money to join all these organizations. But with that being said, uh, I'm just seeing I'm like the youngest person out there, and our our sport, our lifestyle is dying, um, especially in the Bay Area. And so I'm trying to preserve it, and really just asking for some help from you guys um, if you want to join me in that. So. I'm going to, in this video, we're going to put the first part of uh, the rebuild. It's pretty much um, taking the outboard off and, um, you know, we figured out what was wrong with it. We needed a new uh, C-pump that went out. The impeller ended up spinning on the shaft and you guys will see that um, in the video. But we removed the inboard outboard, took everything apart uh, so we could get up to all the seals and all that stuff. I have a shipment coming in of all those seals we can replace them with and then, um, that would be nice and running, but uh, I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time. And like I said, if you guys want to donate, all the information will be down below. And if you do, thank you very much, and you guys will definitely get the proper shout-outs. Let's do it. All right, so right now we are just uh, testing out the motor to make sure that the seat pump is out. Just filling up a tank with some water, and then we're going to start the engine and uh, see if the same overheating issue uh, is occurring. Okay guys, so the seat pumps out, so we're taking the outboard drive off right now. Just taking these off and then putting in that frame. From say there on to that, then we'll know that this thing has to be in that same position. And then we'll figure out that the one goes between the two. Because you almost have to take it off of there and look at it. Okay. You have to see. The ball gear, this ball gear on this housing goes inside it like that, so you just draw a line like you know it. Okay, it okay, meets. okay. Because they've been meshed flat the way for a hundred years. You know, okay. So. okay, let me see if I can get something to find this way. Yeah. 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 Uh oh, okay, it's taking the weight already. Alright. <laughs> okay, no. Maybe you can see it from the top here, okay. just barely. Just barely. Yeah. I hope there's a little slack in it anyway. Okay, what? Well, okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay, let me get some. Grease on there, okay. Okay. Hopefully. Sure the wire comes completely out. Okay, we got the wire out. Oh shit. Put that two by four under it. Just push it over with your yeah, with your there we go. Alright. I think maybe Alright guys, there's the out drive off. This is the shift wire. Ball joint, which I marked and marked there. So that when this comes back together, it goes back in the same exact spot. And, yeah. This is the trim gear. Training gear case a little. We're getting to get us pick. Pick out these O-rings. Okay, so now we've uh, drained the oil and we've gotten the drive off and everything. This is just the uh, intermediate housing on the uh, Skipjack 20, so this is pretty much where 
the inboard meets the outboard part of it as you guys can see you can see the ball gear and all of that stuff the exhaust um, the uh, trim trim gear all the, and the steering gear all that stuff so then once that is as you guys saw the thing on the stand we took the upper housing off of the lower housing the lower housing is what holds on the prop and everything like that and then this has the tilt gear and the exhaust and ball joint and stuff that is taking um, that is then taking the load from the um, from the engine and putting it down into the prop now the C pump is inside of the upper gear housing in a little cylinder um, as you guys can see here and so that comes comes out of it um, there's a few stages to getting it out you have to take the ball gear off this is where the ball gear is sitting um, not the um, uh, hole at the bottom but the hole at the top that's where the ball gear is sitting so you have to take that out and then you take the uh, the uh, center um, center cylinder out as you guys can see this is the ball joint here um, taking that you can see the gear and then that gear is spinning is connecting into, uh, into another gear which is then spinning the uh, impeller shaft um, inside of the cylinder here um, with the seat pump inside it. It's kind of a complicated system. It's a lot of parts and stuff, but as you get it through it, it's not that big of a deal. And so this is the upper housing that we took the cylinder out of. And then once from there, we go ahead and take that cylinder apart. You can see this is the impeller shaft with the, um, with the uh, impeller and stuff. The impeller actually spun off the shaft, so the impeller was fully, was just moving on its own. And I could also see it was having some problems because it was uh, rounding out um, the inside of the, um, where the impeller sits in. Um, as you can see here, it was uh, pretty much ovaling out um, that. I don't know if you can quite see the oval, but that it was the issue uh, with the overheating. So. We finally um, figured it out, which is good, and we're going to get this back together. And like I said, since I'm pulling everything apart, I'm going to go ahead and replace all the seals, like in this big intermediate, or in the upper gear case and stuff like that, and some, se um, and some seals in the intermediate housing, um, things of that nature. But that's pretty much part one. That is the start of everything. Um, sorry the... the uh, me taking everything apart I didn't videotape much I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with this video but we have uh, pretty much figured out what we're doing so everything's gonna get a lot better from here and uh, we put a little more time in these videos so thanks for watching guys and I will talk to you later